everybody it's Michelle welcome back to the scrapbook pal YouTube channel today I'm going to be showing you guys a bee themed card using the bee and flowers wreath stamp set from hero arts along with the bee and flowers wreath coordinating die set so with the coordinating die set I really want to build sort of a honeycomb on the front of my card using the hexagon die from the set and that's sort of a large die so I'm going to be making a larger card. I'm going to be making an A9, which is just an 8.5 by 11 piece of cardstock folded in half. So I'm just going to score that right down the middle at 5.5. So the finished card is going to be 5.5 by 8.5. And, and I'm going to go ahead and crease that down. So one thing that I want to do is create an open window in the front of my card but that's a little bit difficult to do with a card of this size because if I just put it through my die cutting machine like that it's going to cut through or at least make an impression that I don't want in the back side of my card and if I open it up it won't fit and if I turn it this way it still won't fit through my die cutting machine so I'm going to show you guys a little trick that I figured out so for my die cutting sandwich in my cuddle bug anyway it's going to differ depending on your machine but mine would be the a plate the b plate and then the c plate on top of that in between these two would go my cardstock and my die so first i'm going to place that where i want it on my card front i'm using my t square ruler because I don't want my honeycomb to come out wonky and from this first hexagon everything will be based off of that so here is my little trick for cutting that through the front only of the card I'm going to take my B plate and like I said normally I would put my cardstock on here and then my C plate on top so if I unfold it it won't fit through my machine so I'm just going to wrap that around so that the back side of that is behind my B plate and it won't cut. That's going to kind of mess up our edge there, but it's just going to be super easy to re-burnish that edge and it'll come out just fine. So I'm going to run that through. And you can see it didn't do any damage to that and I've just got my hexagon window in the front of my A9 card which I think is a really neat little trick I'm glad I figured that out you just have to play around with what you're doing and make it work the best you can so I'm gonna go ahead and re-crease my card fold there and that should smooth anything out and I've got my hexagon here that I cut out from my card front, which is sort of a vanilla color. I thought that would be a nice light base without being white, which would be too stark, I think. So I've got a few more of the hexagons in that color. I've got some buttery kind of yellow. They're textured on one side, smooth on the other, so you can use whichever works best for your card and I've got a gold glitter cardstock. I think these are going to be really pretty on my card. That way we've sort of got a variation in yellows for our honeycomb. The first thing I want to do with my vanilla ones here, I want to do even more of a honeycomb theme with a stencil here. There will be links to everything in the description below. But these I thought just went so nicely with the bee and wreath stamp and dies from hero arts i'm going to be using scattered straw and wild honey distress oxides and i'm just going to ever so slightly come in and i don't even want to put the pattern on the whole hexagon i just want to give a little bit of an idea of that around the edges and then in with the wild honey with a little bit smaller of a blending brush because I really don't want to come in very far with this one for sure. I just want it to 
darken those edges just a little. And then I'm even going to come back over that with the scattered straw again. And now, once I've done that, I'm going to come back in with my scattered straw. And I'm not going to re-ink it, just what's left on here. And just put a little bit of that into the center. Maybe even come over those stark white lines. And I'm going to do the same thing on all four of my vanilla pieces. And now that we have those, I want to stamp a little scene on one of them. So I've got my Misty here with my stamps already in there. So on this scene, I'm going to be using the two pieces of greenery and this flower up here. I've got those already placed. And just hold that down with my magnet and make sure that's the same placement I wanted. What I'm going to do is just sort of roughly mask the flower portion off of that. I'm using Rustic Wilderness to stamp in my greenery. So then I'll just peel off my mask. And now I'm going to ink up the flower part with the wild honey. I think I can kind of just do that with my ink pad there on the corner. And then I'm going to come in with a little bit of gathered twigs just on a little dauber and just add a little bit of a darker color around the bottom of the flower and maybe even around the bottom of some of those leaves. I think that is beautiful. So now I'm going to flip my Misty around and I've got my little bee in the corner there. Now I've already got a bunch of these bees made up. But I'm going to show you guys how I did it because I think it's really important with this bee. I've got a piece of cardstock here that's about three and a half inch square so that I can stamp a bee, rotate it, stamp another bee, rotate it, and I can get four on each little card like that. I was really particular with my bee because I tried stamping them in just black and I didn't like it. The wings were too dark. It didn't look like wings to me. So here's what I wanted to do. I'm going to stamp it with two different colors and then I'm going to be Copic coloring. So I'm going to be using Memento Tuxedo Black for the B portion. So he's got those black stripes and his legs are black. But I want to stamp the wings in speckled egg. And I'm just going to do a little bit of masking in order to make that happen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp all of my speckled egg part of my bees. If it gets on those other areas, then we're just going to be able to stamp over that with black and it'll be just fine. And it looks really messy right now, but they turn out really cute in the end. So now I'm going to take a little piece of masking paper. I've got some Gina K Masking Magic. And I'm going to cut a piece big enough for my bee so we can stamp that bee on there. I'm just going to lightly stamp with my Tuxedo Black onto my mask. And I've got enough of an impression there that I can cut out those wings. And now I can ink it up in Tuxedo Black. And you can reuse these masks a couple of times, so that's no problem. And I'm just going to color that really simply. I'm just filling in the whole area 
with the YR31. Shade one side with the Y26. So now for the wings, I'm going to take BG72 and BG70 as my lighter color. And in toward the body, I'm just going to come in with a little bit of that BG72. Flick out a little bit with a little bit of a feathering motion there. And then blend that out with my BG70. And also, if you guys can see that little white highlight on his head, I'm not real crazy about that, so I'm just going to color it in with a W10. You can leave it in if you like. It's just personal preference. Okay, so I am not done with these little guys yet. You can be if you want to and leave them just like that. They're beautiful. But I really wanted to bring the vibrancy back to that black. So I'm going to bring my Misty back. I'm going to go over these with a clear embossing powder with that stamped image again to just bring all that back to life. So I first put my anti-static powder tool. And this time I'm going to ink up my B with clear Versamark ink. I'm going to go ahead and ink up all four of these. Put the embossing powder on all four and I can heat set them all at once. And then when that's dry, die cut them out with that coordinating die. So here they are all die cut out along with a few more that I had already done ahead of time. And before we start assembling our card, I want to finish off my little scene. I want to color in those open leaves. And I'm just going to do that with the G46. And for the flower, I want to shade in that bottom part. And I'm going to do this with W5 and W10. I know that's kind of an unusual combination. And it's dark, but some flowers are dark in the center like that. And I thought it would help bring in all the black that's going to be in my bees and some things like that. So I'm going to color in the W5 first in that bottom section. And then just a little bit of flicking with the W10. From the bottom there. I'm even going to dot the little stamens with the dark. And I think that's going to be enough to tie in our dark colors with the black. So let's assemble our card. We've worked a lot to get to this point. Okay, first thing I want to do is I want to inlay one of these. That was really the design element that I thought of that I, was really my favorite element of the whole card was just how that's going to open as a window and have that on the inside of your card. So the sentiment will be inside and outside and I really like that. So all I'm going to do is just hold my card shut, put some art glitter glue in there and just inlay it. And I think that is just perfect. I love that. So now we can start with our other hexagons and build a honeycomb all over the front of our card. card and I want to go ahead and get my bees put on there 
I'm going to use my art glitter glue for that too. It would be really cute if you wanted to use some foam adhesive and pop them up and give them a little bit of dimension. But I really want this guy to be hanging through the window there. I think that's just so cute. And a little trick I'm going to do after I get him adhered down, I'm going to flip that open and then just put one right on top of that. That's going to hide the back side of that die cut and then give us the look of a B on the inside of our window too. And just place a few around wherever you want them. I think I want one flying in here to my flower. And one more thing I want to do is I want to have one kind of inside here like this. But I want him to stay on the window too. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and glue two of these together. If you wanted to just adhere them down on the inside, that would be fine. But I just want some little bees hanging onto my window when I open that card. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on this side here to catch the back side of that. Now we've got two bees hanging on. I think that's really cute. I think that is so cute. Okay, I'm going to bring back in my Misty for some more stamping. I'm going to use Hello Sunshine. And I think I'll put the little heart below that. And this time I'm going to use Versafine Onyx Black. And on my little bee trail here, I'm not going to stamp that loop. I'm going to put a couple more trails. So just a few more little finishing touches and our card will be done. I think it's coming along beautifully. I think I'll color in the flower in white with my gel pen and I'll add a few more little touches of white in there and I'm also going to add a few little accents of Nouveau crystal drops and I'm using Gold Coast And I think that's all my card needs. I think it's just beautiful. I really love the way it turned out. I hope that you guys like it too. Be sure to head on over to scrapbookpal.com. Also, be sure to subscribe to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel if you haven't already done that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.